Well, good morning, church. It is great to be with you this morning. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Joshua, we'll start in chapter 7, finish in chapter 8, and a study this morning that I've entitled New Beginnings. And I, I pray this morning that as we read this passage together, as we look at God's Word, that should be encouraged. How many of you have ever done something in your life that you'll look back on and go, man, I wish I had not have done it that way. How many of you are perfect? Good, so we're okay. We've got some that have made mistakes, and we've got no one who's perfect. So we're all okay in here this morning. It is so important for us to realize that in our lives, God orchestrates very often wonderful things out of our failures. That in fact, he takes our failures and very frequently turns them into marvelous blessings. But there are some secrets and some keys to that that I believe we can find from God's word this morning. And as we begin here, first with chapter 7, we find the story of, uh, of a huge error on the part of the children of Israel. And yes, there's one particular person in chapter 7. His name is Achan, and he goes into the city and takes spoil he's not supposed to take. But it's really a story of failing to seek God. It is a place that we come to very frequently for a singular reason, and that is we become self-confident. We're confident in the things of the past. We're confident maybe in our victories from last week. And so the stage is set in this particular portion of Scripture with the victory that was at at Jericho. And that victory at Jericho was really not exactly a stellar battle plan in a human sense, because the children of Israel were instructed by God to simply go march around the city and then do it seven times on the last day and take the Ark of the Covenant, and the walls would fall down. So it really was never them anyway, and it is never you either in victory in the Lord. Amen? It's always Him. And we need to keep that in view this morning, because when we become complacent, when we become overconfident, when we trust in the victories of last week, when, when we say, hey, we've really, you know, we've already done that, and we've bought the t-shirt, we're okay with that area of life, we're setting ourselves up for a place that the enemy can really get to us, because we start trusting in ourselves, and most importantly, we stop talking to God. We begin to look at the things of the past and say, well, you know, it's okay. I I, I can get through this in my own strength. That is the picture here as we begin in chapter 7 and then as we see the new beginning in chapter 8. Would you pray with me? Father, we have come this morning to hear from you. Lord, we've gathered together to study your word and to be instructed by your spirit. Lord, help us to hear and help us to partake together of the good fruit of your word in our lives. Pray that you would bless us and anoint us and touch us and pray that you take each of us, Lord, give us some truth, some nugget that we can hang on to, that this week might be a week for many of us of new beginnings. God, we bless you, we thank you, and all God's people said, amen. You're in verse 2 in chapter 7, and now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, and so you can kind of get the picture. Jericho, this tremendous victory. They're going to go to a much smaller city, this little tiny settlement, really, uh, of Ai. And at Ai, there was no wall. There, there was no great fortification. There was not a massive army. It looked like, from a human perspective, no big deal. Much like those situations in your life, well, it's only a car, it's only a house, this is only a a date, this is only an internet connection and I'm looking at a website. It's only, it's only, it's only. Family of God, we are prone to think at times that we have arrived or we've gotten past uh, some area of our life to where we no longer need to talk to the Lord. That is a fatal flaw. We need to seek the Lord every day and in every way about everything. And the picture goes on this way, recorded for us here in the seventh chapter, which is beside Beth Evan. 
on the east side of Bethel and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. Now you'll notice that this is Joshua speaking. There's no apparent inclination that he's spoken to the Lord. He is simply giving his assessment of the situation. And so the men went up and spied out Ai. So some more flesh. Now these may well have been godly guys. We don't know. But we know the result. And here it is. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. And do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. From a human perspective, it looks like God's voice is not necessary. It looks like getting a plan from the Lord uh, isn't needed at this point in time. After all, aren't we the marvelous victors from Jericho? Haven't we already overcome this particular giant? Uh, that was a walled city. I mean, look at these things. I mean, of course we're up to the task. It's so minuscule in our lives that we don't even need everybody or everything. Brothers and sisters, this is how we get in trouble. This is where we end up in a situation to where God's got to come to our rescue instead of going before us in victory. And if you notice there in verse 5, because of the attack and because of the way it went forward, because there were 36 men killed and because the rest of them turned tail and ran, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Losers. And sometimes we do the same thing in our lives. We have the Lord working in an area of our life and then all of a sudden it comes upon us that, uh, you know, I'll just handle this myself. I'll go in my own strength. I'll do the best I can in thinking about it. And there's nothing wrong with thinking, by the way. God gave you a brain for a reason. But when your thinking becomes a substitute for praying, you're in trouble. When your best guess scenario becomes something better than God's blessed scenario, you're in trouble. We have lost battles, all of us. We have made mistakes. All of us. Henry Ford, uh, obviously a, a great innovator. He said this about mistakes. He said it's an opportunity to begin again, but more intelligently. In other words, to learn from those mistakes. Thomas Edison, as he was uh, working on inventing the light bulb, most of you know that he didn't come upon that light bulb on the first try. And matter of fact, he said that I've not failed. I've simply found 10,000 ways to not build a light bulb. And it's true. Very often our mistakes in life are a way for the Lord to speak to us. And he wants to use those mistakes. He wants to take those errors and do something wonderful with them. But very often we won't let him have those mistakes. And instead we become overcome by them. Thomas Edison also said one time, he said, we often miss opportunity because it's dressed in overalls and looks and smells like work. Sometimes it's work. You know, it's hard to admit that you've blown it. It's tough to say to your Christian friend, would you pray with me? I fell in this area. I stumbled in this area. I've got a problem in this area of my life. It's hard to do that. And yet it's so essential for our growth that we admit the things that we have done wrong. If we confess, he is faithful and just to forgive, amen, and to cleanse, to get us back on the right track. And that's the picture here in the book of Joshua. This is a mistake. They've blown it. It didn't pan out well. And now as we turn our attention to the 8th chapter and our focus for the rest of our time, notice the difference. Remember back in chapter 8, it was Joshua speaking. Notice the beginning, or, or excuse me, in chapter 7. Notice the beginning here in chapter 8. And now the Lord said to Joshua, you see the difference? Joshua's doing the speaking in chapter 7, the Lord's doing the speaking in chapter 8. 
it is a good idea for us to remember who needs to speak. And the way that we frequently hear the voice of the Lord is to ask him, amen, to pray. To say, Lord, what do you think about this situation? What would you have me do? And so it says there in verse 1, And now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise and go to Ai. For see, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, his land, and you shall do to Ai and to its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil and its cattle you shall take as booty for yourselves. Lay up an ambush behind the city. This is the exact opposite plan of Jericho. Amen? Do you see the new beginning? At Jericho, it was completely in your face, daytime operation. They march around the city. They're kind of, you know, we don't know whether they were mocking the people of Jericho or not necessarily, but they're marching around the city in broad daylight, and they really don't care what the people of Jericho think. Here, God says, look, I want you to go actually as an army. I I want you to go as a people of war. But know this, I've already fought the battle. It's won. You just simply need to go take the city. God is giving them a do-over. Anybody in here absolutely thrilled about God loving do-overs? Amen? I am. I'm a, I am a total do-over. I am a redo. I'm a, I'm a play it again Sam. You know, just let's do something different with this guy. And the Lord wants to work in our lives that way. He he wants to use you to conquer new ground, to climb new mountains, to be used of him for his kingdom purposes while we wait on this earth for his imminent return. Amen? But you got to be talking to him. You need to let him start you over if necessary. If you've gone someplace you shouldn't go and done something that you shouldn't do. And we're prone to those things. Very often I talk... You know, well, my boyfriend is a pre-Christian. That's the same as a heathen. Someone who's not saved. And and we wonder sometimes, it's like we, we mess with fire and wonder why we get burned, amen? But can I tell you that even in that situation, God wants to do it fresh and do it new. Just let him have it and let him tell you where you need to go next. And how you need to act. And in this passage, it starts with the Word of God. God said to Joshua, you need to ask him. You need to talk to him. So very often we don't do that. I don't do that. There are three things that we can glean here. Notice the word of encouragement. Because very often we get discouraged over the past, so much so that we have a fear of that future and we go nowhere. It's like, oh man, I blew it over here so I don't want to go there because I might fail again. If that's you, in Jesus' name, let the Lord set you free. He can use your mistakes. He can give you a new beginning. Don't stay locked up in fear and discouragement. Be encouraged that God says to Joshua, don't be afraid or be dismayed. Now, he had a reason to be afraid and be dismayed, amen? They had just gotten beat badly. They had actually turned tail and run. They were running away from this little tiny unfortified city. So the Lord allows them that encouragement. A second thing here, notice the word of instruction to them. Can I tell you God always has a plan? Amen? Amen? Now, now we don't sometimes check in with them, so we don't know what the plan is. Sometimes we're tempted to insert our own plan. But notice he says to them, take all the people of war. God actually had a plan. And it wasn't the plan that the guys came up with. It was his plan. And matter of fact, it's the opposite of what they came up with. They come up with, ah, no big deal. God says, yeah, it is a big deal, and you need to take everybody. And furthermore, you need to leave a little remnant behind the city, kind of stealth-like, just in case. God had a plan. He instructs them. He gives them an opportunity. And and in that vein, God always gives his best to those of us who give him the last choice in the matter. 
So very often, I close the door on God speaking to me. I, I, I get partway down the road and I stop praying, or I get partway down the road and I stop reading, or I get partway down the road and I no longer seek godly counsel. And before you know it, I've closed the door so God can't speak to me and give me further instruction. We need to leave the door open right to the very last minute. Allow God input into your life all the time. I, I drove down last night, and you know, I'm not the most patient person on, on earth when I'm on the freeway, so if you see me, just pray for me. <laughs> but I was driving El Camino del Diablo. That's the highway of Satan, for those of you who need a translation. The 91 freeway, and, I, and I'm... And I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, you know, I've got this, Lord. It's going to be okay. And I leave, and I'm driving down the And I get there, and I come down the 210 and down the 15, and I get to the 91, and I'm thinking, praise God, I've got a fast track. And then there they are, the taillights. And I'm thinking, Jesus' name, this can't be happening to me. It took me an hour and 15 minutes to make it to the fast track. I had stopped praying. I'm like, Lord, I don't need any help with this. I've got this. I've got a fast track. I mean, that's the cure-all to all things traffic-related. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll keep praying, God. And So I had a little bit of prayer time while I'm being instructed. Amen? Give God the opportunity to input into your life. And lo and behold, he's saying, oh, I'd kind of like for you to do this. I'd like for you to say that. God's instructing. God wants to speak. And in that, he gives them a word of promise. Notice the third thing here. It says, for I have given you what they couldn't take in their own strength and in their own flesh, God had actually given them already. You see, the word of promise to us is, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. For I know my thoughts towards you, says the Lord. They are a future. I hope they're good. They're not evil. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you get it? God wants to give you that word of promise. He wanted to input into the children of Israel's lives. He was trying to speak to them and remind them who actually was in charge. And he says, actually, I've given you these things. But you need to do it my way. You are inheritant, you're part of the, the glorious inheritance of Christ Jesus. Do you realize that? That because of who you are in Him, this earth is actually going to be yours one day. And yet we walk around like, well, you know, I don't know if God loves me. God loves you, God loves us. And He's made promises to us, and we need to step into those promises by faith. D.L. Moody once wisely said, he says, God's never made a promise that's too good to be true. Amen? Not so much with OxyClean. Amen? <laughs> and yet we trust some guy from Australia with our laundry. That's what I'm saying to you. I'm trying to get you to think through these things. We give people trust and we give them accolades. We do all these things. We say, look, go ahead and take my life. Take my laundry. And God's saying to you, look, I'm the creator of heaven and earth. I flung the stars into space. Do you not think that I know a little more than you? And so in that, he next gives them notice in verse 3 through 13, a new strategy. And for sake of time, we'll condense it a little bit. And Joshua rose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men. You realize that's 10 times the amount that he sent the day before. Amen? Little different battle plan. A little different strategy. He's saying, look, you guys did it your own way and it didn't work. Do it my way. It's a new strategy. We need those new beginnings. We need that infinite variety in our life. And notice in verse 9, and Joshua therefore sent them out, and they went to lie in ambush, and they stayed between Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. Your pastor was among the people. Good leaders are among the people. 
This was a new thing. Before, Joshua was too busy to be among the people. He said, ah, you take somebody else and you go. This time he's among the people. We're going to see further that he actually went into the valley himself. This is a different strategy. God is very diverse. His variety is infinite. And we need to, to allow God to do new things in our lives. We need to allow God to use that infinite variety of the way he works in this world to cause great things to be done for his kingdom. But we don't like change, amen? A lot of us are, are pretty stuck in our ways. I am stuck in my, my wife moved our furniture yesterday. It's like I walked into the house and my, my holy chair is over there. And I said, how can I watch the Clippers defeat the Memphis Grizzlies from that place in the living room? You've destroyed my, this is, my whole world is upside down. Spiritually, those things happen to us, don't they? It's like God does something different, and you're saying, oh, I don't know how I'm going to accomplish anything. Now I'm stuck. God changed up the battle plan. He did something new for the children of Israel. He changes his leaders. He changes us. And I think a lot of it has to do with one singular thing. It keeps us from trusting in our own flesh. It causes us to need him on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis. Unless God speaks, I don't know what to do. Unless God moves, I don't want to go anywhere. Unless the Lord is in it, let's not do it. You see, so he gives them a new strategy. He gives them a new beginning, something they weren't looking for. They were probably wanting to just stay. Let's skip AI. Can you see them thinking that? What? Forget that city. And yet God had actually given it to them. Basically, they now ask for it, and God delivers. It was a new day. It was a new beginning. It's important that we do that, that we allow God into those areas of our lives to where we've had a defeat, and we're asking him now to give us a victory. Lord, I blew it, but you have a plan. Joshua simply single, signals this new victory in a very simple way. And I, I would remind you that back in chapter 5, we see a wonderful thing because Joshua meets the captain of the host of the Lord. That's actually who is doing the fighting for you. Amen? Because the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Amen? He, he's the one that ultimately is responsible for attaining the victories he wants in our lives. It's his plan. It's his will, his way, his wishes. And when we do that, it's his responsibility as well. We need to have the Lord go for us where we cannot go ourselves. And I love that God allows this to do over here. Notice the city of Ai is emptied out. What they could not do with their flesh, God does by simply speaking it so. They went up to take the city and God simply sends them there to have them run away again. He actually uses the previous day's defeat. Do you see it? Exactly what you did the day before that you thought was a loss, I'm going to have you do that again. You're going to turn tail and run, and I'm actually going to use it for your good. God works together how many things for your good? All things, amen? For those who love God and are the called according to his purposes, amen? You see, even our defeats he uses for good. Even the crazy things that we would look at, man, I wish I had not have done it that way. God can still even use those things in our lives. Matthew Henry said, those who are most in danger are the ones who are least aware of it. So important for us to see that. There are a few things that I believe we can take away from this. Because God knew what God was going to do, amen? Amen. The children of Israel didn't know what God was going to do. God did. Their defeat the day before did not sneak up on God. God knew exactly what was going to happen, but he was waiting for them to admit that they were not sufficient. Can I say to you this morning, God is waiting for you to admit that you are not sufficient. 
That's why Paul said, my sufficiency is in Christ. Not that I am sufficient, but he is. Ai ends up captured. Verse 20, it says, And then the men of Ai looked behind them, and they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to heaven. And so they had no power to flee this way or that. And the people who had fled into the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. All they had to do was listen to God, do what he said. And he gave them the victory. What were some of those keys? handful of things that I see here. Number one, Joshua was absolutely conscious that the battle was the Lord's. Exactly what is declared to us there in 2 Chronicles 20. You see, we need to not be afraid. We need to not be dismayed. The multitude is great against you. There is a heavenly host of wickedness in this world. Amen? The multitude against you is great, but greater is he who's in you. Amen? And the battle belongs to the Lord. It's his responsibility. It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to ask him and then do what he says. Then the onus is on him. A second thing that I see here as we close is that Joshua waited for further instruction. You see, the day before, he had cut off that communication line with the Lord, and he just simply did what seemed right in his own eyes. That's going to be the story of the book of Judges, amen? Amen. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. They're getting an actual picture of that right here in the book of Joshua. It's like, man, that didn't work. You need to wait. Continue. Press on. Allow God to speak right into the very last moment into everything in your life. And here Joshua just lifts up his spear towards the city. It doesn't make any sense. But the Lord says, hey, this is what I want you to do. Many of us live by that mantra. I'd rather do something even if it's wrong than wait for you know, something that I can't control. It's kind of like my driving. Honestly, you know what I was thinking? Well, I'll get off on the 71, I'll go up to the 16, then I'll go over to the 57, I'll go north, I'll get on the 210, go over to the 605, I'll come down to 605, then I'll get on the 90. That's what I was thinking. And all the while, the Lord say, well, just wait, it'll be okay. Got some extra prayer time. But Lord i got to go do something. They that wait on the Lord are renewed in strength. Amen? You want to mount up with wings as eagles? Wait on the Lord. You want to be renewed in strength? Wait on the Lord. Let Him input into your life. And the final thing that we can kind of focus in on is Joshua had that kind of faith that works. Amen? Faith takes work sometimes. Amen? James chapter 2, faith without works is dead. Amen? D-E-A-D, dead. If you really have faith, then it'll actually cause you to get busy. It'll actually make it so you want to go out and say, Lord, if you're in this, let's go. You'll, You'll take that opportunity that's been given to you by this new start, this fresh beginning, this newness that's come into your life because you've had a defeat, you're now going to say, Lord, I I don't want that again. I want your best for me. Let's go out and do something new. You're going to actually go put your faith to to work. And of course, the best way we can do that is by allowing the God, God that created the universe to do in us exactly what he wants to do. And for me, that means sometimes I need to put off the old, put on the new. I need to take up that Ephesians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 3 principles. It's just like, man, I did it this way last time. It didn't work. I need to do it this way because this is the new way that the Lord would have me go. And when you do that, you can expect a result that comes from God, not one that just comes from your best guess or your flesh. And so this morning, don't let defeat keep you down. Take that new beginning, that new direction. Throw in there a serious dose of faith. Get back into the fight. Allow God to do something new and fresh in your life. Let Him use those old defeats. Let Him take that AI moment and change it into something marvelous in your life. Because then you can look back on what the Lord has done 
and rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? I pray that, that you take off those, those old grave clothes and you put on some garments of praise and allow God to do something fresh, something new, and something wonderful. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for all the restarts, the redos, the do-overs, the new beginnings in our lives. God, where we've gone out in flesh and, Lord, reaped the results of it, and, and yet you don't condemn us. You didn't come into the world to condemn. You came to set us free. You came that we might have life. And so, God, we ask that you'd take our weaknesses, our faults, and our failures and help us to begin again. Lord, help us to start over. Help us to take up the shield of faith. Lord, help us to put on those garments of praise. Look for your voice in all that we do and all that we say. Listen carefully to what you would do with us. Then help us to march out in faith into new victories. We bless you, we praise you, we love you, and God's people all said, amen. God bless you. Let him do something new this week, amen? amen.